But let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for the sun that is shining and the recent rains that have nourished the earth. We pray that in this time together, you might nourish us with your word, and that your Holy Spirit might, might move in and through us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Would you join me in the opening canticle, a song of God's grace. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love, you destined us to be your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will, to the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. Let us pray. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who's promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The reason for my red is that today is uh, the Feast of Simon and Jude and the collect for Simon and Jude is. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. With Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone, we thank you for the apostles Simon and Jude and we pray that we may reveal your love and mercy and being joined in the unity of spirit may grow into a holy temple accepted, acceptable to you through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Would you please stand? Gospel according to St Luke 
chapter 6, beginning at the 12th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May what I share be in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a fairly familiar Bible passage uh, where Jesus uh, lists off his apostles. Um, and often we do get these types of verses around um, feast days of the apostles. But today we've got a particular problem as we read this version from Luke. Firstly, which Simon is the Simon? And secondly, there's no Jude. So who is um, Luke talking about? So a little bit of decoding is helpful. Firstly, um, we believe it uh, refers to Simon who was called the Zealot. So Simon who was called Peter. So the, 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 the Simon that we celebrate today is not Simon who becomes Peter, but Simon the other Simon. And I guess one of the ways that Jesus differentiated between um, people with the same names, which is the way that we still do it today, is like he gave them nicknames. So Peter, the rock, Simon, uh, you're the Zealot. So, um, so we don't know a lot about Simon, um, uh, but the, 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 the next person, Jude, is not actually mentioned in this passage. Well, on the surface he's not, but Jude is also Judas, some son of James. Uh, the convention of um, the early church was to differentiate uh, Judas, son of James, with Judas Iscariot. And so... Um, became more commonly known as Jude, uh, also Thaddeus. Um, you might have heard that name as well. Um, also the same person. It's believed uh, that both Simon and Jude travelled together to Persia and became missionaries in Persia. And uh, Jude is uh, attributed to the, the letter that's in the back of our New Testament. I did want to uh, touch a little bit about on these uh, two travelling together, but before I do, I really only got a very simple point uh, to make this morning. Simple man, simple point, uh, that Jesus' choosing of his disciples came after a night of prayer. And as I was reading uh, this because as a preacher, there's, there's not a lot of material to work with here. You've got just a list of names. Uh, this really just profoundly jumped out at me um, in that sense that when we commit ourselves to prayer, the names of those around us and the lives of those around us are often revealed. When we come to God in prayer, we often start by focusing on ourselves. And uh, it's not an unusual pattern for followers of Jesus to do. It's a bit of a human uh, trait that we think of ourselves first. But when we commit ourselves to the more extensive type of relationship with God through prayer, my um, experience and the experience of others is consistent with that of Jesus the names of those for whom we should be with are revealed. Now, I don't know how many Jesus had to choose from. Um, we do get a sense that 
by the time we get partway through um, the Gospels, Jesus had at least 70 that he was able to send out in pairs, which doesn't include the women and children that were, were, were attached to, to these, um, these men who he sent out. So there was probably a healthy church-sized group of people that were travelling around and with Jesus. But there were 12 names that stood out to Jesus. 12 people that he felt he was called to invest more deeply in. And we know as we read the Gospels of those 12, there was probably a, an executive, if you like, of around three that Jesus was even closer to. I wonder how much of our relationships and our time invested in relationships is moved and motivated by prayer these days rather than reactive response to what's needed. I wonder how we would be changed in our relationships if we regularly prayed nights of prayer well that that's a big call but periods of prayer where we're asking god to bring to our heart and mind those for whom we should be alongside there's lots of different ways of doing that one of the ways that i uh, I do um, do that as I pray through our, our parish role and often names come to mind. I have to admit, often I pray for names and I'm thinking to myself, I'm not sure who they are, <laughs> but I'm praying for them anyway. Uh, but consistently a name will arise that I should give a phone call to or spend some time with. We don't come away with a list of 50 people. We come away with a manageable group that we are called to spend time with. I don't think it's any coincidence that Simon and Jude are named next to each other in this list. Simon, who was called a zealot, followed very closely by Judas, son of James. These two apostles formed a bond within that group. And these two apostles then took that relationship to the reaches of the known world to spread the good news, to create more relationships. We're in a, a series at the moment um, on our Sundays that's looking at that dreaded e-word evangelism and this passage reminds me today that evangelism always begins with prayer asking God to direct our relationships and our time and our effort and our energy that we're spending with others that we are called to not be people who do life alone. As a church, we're called, for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, to do life together. It does sound like a marriage, doesn't it? But we are the bride of Christ. It is a marriage. It might seem a daunting task when we look at the enormity of the people that we could connect with. Even just the people in this room is more than 12, let alone those who will watch uh, this at a later time. So we've already got more than enough than we, that we can handle. My challenge to you this week, and it's one that I'm giving my, myself, is to daily commit myself to coming before God in prayer and asking God, who will you name for me? And once those names come, to do something with them, to call them, to choose to spend time with them. And of that group, my hope is 
that we might more be more closely knitted together as a church. And our idea of church will expand because the names that come to us won't just be the ones sitting in our room at the moment. We have within our community all the gifts and talents, all the time and opportunity needed to carry out Christ's, Christ's mission in the world. But unless we start with prayer, we're going to be floundering with no purpose. So let us pray. Loving God, you have chosen us and called us by name. And you have positioned us with relationships in our world, influence, an example that is often beyond our own comprehension. Help us in our daily prayer time to allow you to bring others to our minds in the same way that you have chosen us. You call us to choose to spend time with others, those for whom we enjoy the time together, but also those for whom we can find challenging. As we do that, we pray that we might realise that we are doing your work and what this is called is church. Amen. Would you join me with the canticle, Te Deum Laudamus? We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you, the noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Bought with the price of your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. We pray for the peace of the world, the leaders of the nations and for all in authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the welfare of your holy church, our bishops, and for all the clergy and people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may share with justice the resources of the earth and live in trust and goodwill with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the aged and the infirm, for the bereaved and the lonely, and for the sick and suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor and the oppressed, for prisoners and captives, and for all who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, Lord God, for the communion of saints and for the glorious hope of the res resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that we may, with one voice, glorify our God and Father. Amen. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, your mercies never come to an end. In the trials and the battles, in the fires and the floods, great is your faithfulness. I find my Ceases your mercies never come to an end in the trials and the battles, in the fires and the floods. Great is your faithfulness in the noise I long for peace in the lies I. Search for truth when the world comes.
comes crashing down Only one thing still remains When hope is lost and dreams are crushed Only your love stays the same The steadfast love of the Lord Never ceases your mercies Never come to an end In the trials and the battles In the fires and the floods Great is your faithfulness Slow to anger, rich in love Overflowing grace Overwhelming mercy You are my hiding place Slow to anger, rich in love Overflowing grace Overwhelming mercy you are my hiding place The steadfast love of the Lord Never ceases Your mercies never come to an end In the trials and the battles In the fires and the floods Great is Your faith Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness.